yes, I've kind of got a mess here. Well, no, not really. I am changing the battery in this cell phone. And this gave me the perfect opportunity to uh, kind of go over what I like to call tiny tools. I've got two cordless screwdrivers, battery operated, that were provided to me to test and demonstrate. And it's a perfect opportunity to kind of show you what these are. There's two different ones here. One's uh, bigger than the other. I shouldn't say bigger, but one has more features and there's more stuff in the kit than in this one. This will cost a little more, this will cost a little less. They both do basically the same thing. And I'm going to show you what they do coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the loft above the shop and the two cordless screwdrivers I want to kind of show you today. They're made by a company called Peaky, P Key, like that. So I got two models here. I've got uh, model CS0631A and model CS0233D. And there'll be links in the description if you're looking to get one of these. And again, I, these are provided to me to uh, test and demonstrate, which is what I'm going to do here. But I thought I would do both of them at once. I knew I had a, this project coming up, plus some other ones. I also work on printers and laptops and other small things. So every once in a while you need those tiny tools. And I'll show you what I've used in the past for quite a while. This here is a cordless screwdriver. This one's made by General. And it's got LED task light on it. And it does righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It also runs very, very slow. This runs on two AAA batteries. And it burns the batteries pretty quick. So your other option, of course, is the, uh, the manual type. And these are little tiny precision screwdrivers that have interchangeable tips. I've got a whole set of tips here for them. Plus, I've got some other in my work tray up here. So, yes, these work fine, and they have a swivel end on them. So you can do this kind of thing with them as you're working, because they're for very, very tiny items. Uh, watches, glasses, cell phones, laptops, computers, some of the smaller parts inside of a uh, inkjet printer, laser jet printer, that type of thing. Then there's some more common, larger ones like this here you buy at the, your regular home store. This one here has to be a craftsman. This one here is uh, professional. I'm not even sure where I got that one. But they are adequate for the larger sizes. When you get into teeny tiny sizes, you need these smaller precision ones. So what's up with a cordless screwdriver? Why would you even want one? Well, I'm going to show you the, uh, the smaller model here first. This has paper in the way is what it has. This has quite the assortment of bits on both sides. Uh, it's got, uh, well, it doesn't actually give you a total here. It has a lot, so you've got everything on that side. On this side here, pop that open, you have some more bits, plus you have the battery. And this also is the battery charging station. So you would leave your battery, you would put, take your battery out of the screwdriver, put it in the little holder there. There's a USB-C port right here on the front where you would plug in your USB charging cable, which is also supplied. Got to put my bit back in there. Then on the back here, there's a little indentation you push and your screwdriver pops out. There's your screwdriver. Remove the bottom here. You put your battery in, positive side facing down. Then insert your bit of choice. I'll just grab one here. And you can tighten. And you can loosen. Righty tighty lefty loosey. And it also has a uh, speed adjustment here. That's the slowest speed right there. Then there's a medium speed, and if you pull it all the way back, that's the highest speed. So, and hopefully you can see that. I know with these tiny tools, it's kind of hard to see that 
kind of thing. And if you want to use it as a regular screwdriver, it also works that way and it has a swivel tip on it. So, the only disadvantage with this one over the other one I'm going to show you is to charge the battery on this, you have to take the battery out of the screwdriver. Otherwise, you can leave it in there. It uh, doesn't really hurt anything. And to uh, put this away then, you would just push the little lever there, drop your screwdriver back in there. Ah, you got to take the bit out though. Can't leave the bit in it. There we go. You just push a little button. You can drop your screwdriver right back down in there and you got it's all self-contained. These covers here are hinged and they have little magnets here which hold them shut. So that is what I would call the base model, the smaller one. Put that one off to the side. Now I'll show you the deluxe model. So this comes with some accessories. One of them is a stand for the screwdriver and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. You get a little jar to put your screws in and I have some in there. I also have some in my work tray here and this is what they call an anti-static silicone mat for working on electronics and I've had this for years. I don't remember where I got it. It's got all kinds of little compartments to keep your screws sorted out in. So that's a great thing to have. This here is a uh, ma little magnetic work table. You can put your items on it and it will hold them in place. Example. Mostly made for screws. It's a little bit warped. I've had that for a long time. Those are handy things to have. Uh, this also comes with a magnetic work table. This is a very small one and it has uh, squares on the side because when you take things apart like cell phones or laptops you have a lot of different kinds of screws and you, it's a good idea to keep them separated unless you've done it a lot and know where, absolutely where everything goes. So that's another handy thing to have. So this comes with this larger model. Of course with both models you get a USB-C charging cord. Now with this larger model here you also get this little guy here where you can magnetize and demagnetize your bits just simply by okay if on this side it says magnetize it's got positive so if you move your bit in and out that will magnetize the bit and will pick up the screws and yes that's a tiny screw that came out of the cell phone. Then to demagnetize it, you would just turn it around where you have the negative up here and just do the same thing up and back and forth several times. That'll demagnetize it. So obviously then it won't pick up anything if you don't want it magnetized. That's handy. I have a much larger model I keep down in the shop for my big screwdrivers. It gets used quite a bit. You also get one of these little what I call a little pry tool. It's plastic. Um, I also have a metal one here that I've been using and these look like a Tarpex and this one here has got some bent quarters and stuff on it because I've used it a lot. And you get a suction cup that I just took out of the box so it's a little bit bent up. This is good for grabbing the glass. And be careful here. If you need to grab the glass and pull it out of a cell phone, this is a good way to hold it. And I have, here's one right here that I, whoop, that I actually used when I took this phone apart. So now let's get into the screwdriver itself. In the kit here you have magnetic sides that come off and you have a huge assortment of bits on this side. And another large assortment of bits on this side. There are 56 plus 1. I think that makes 57. My math is right. That all fits in there good. And for your screwdriver itself, I've already charged this because I was using it. This little tube comes off. Here's your, here's your screwdriver. It's got a uh, charge indicator here. You just plug your USB-C cable into the end of it to charge it. And you can slip your bit in the end. And that bit is not out of this kit. That's out of my other kit. And here again you have righty-tighty and lefty-loosey. 
Plus you have little LED work light on the end so that if you are working to put a screw back in, grab one of these here, and you have things lined up, you can easily put that screw back in just like that. Uh, you may not have been able to see that because that screw is so tiny. And I don't need that in there yet because I have to put the back cover back on here after I get my new battery, which is supposed to be here today. So there's how that holder works. You just drop the screwdriver in and this base is heavy and it'll hold it up. So I'm going to go off topic just a little bit to answer a question I know I'm going to get asked about working with this type of stuff. A lot of people have pointed out to my handshake, and yes they do, and no I do not have Parkinson's, and no I have not had too much caffeine, and I'm not having alcohol withdrawal. It is called essential tremors, and I was born with it. There's nothing. There is a brain surgery cure that they can do on one hand but not the other, and I have no intentions on having brain surgery done. I have learned to work around it and work with it. And what I can do, uh, you may have noticed if you watch any of my videos, I'm just going to grab this screw in this little alien wrench here, is for me to be able to hold that, to put it in, I will actually put my finger on the end of the screw, whether it be a screwdriver or alien wrench like this or whatever, so I could get a starter because my handshake, and it would fall off otherwise or I would miss the mark. So that's one workaround. And if I'm using a screwdriver, and I don't have any little screws right here, I will do the same type of thing. You'll a, lot, a lot of times you'll see me put my finger on the head of the screw and hold it, or I'll use a screw holding screwdriver. That's how I overcome that. If you are afflicted with essential tremors or you know somebody that is, that is one of the workarounds. Okay, well how do you work with these little teeny tiny screws like this? How, how can you take a cell phone apart with them, little microscopic screws? I brace my hand whether I set it down on something hard or I take my other hand and put it close to it, I can keep my hand dead steady, just like that. That's how I've learned to work around it. That's how I worked in doing precision electrical work for over 40 years. I know how to overcome these little handicap things. And I had quite a time in grade school learning handwriting, and you don't want to see my handwriting, it's absolutely horrible. So that's a little off topic, but I know I'm going to get asked, how do you work with that with well, your handshake? And by the way, I'm not the only YouTuber with the essential tremors. If you're a woodworker and you are uh, subscribed to Stumpy Nubs, he has the same affliction. And you're just born with it. There's nothing you can do about it. Now let's get back to these things. Okay, so how do these compare? Um, I did count the bits. This smaller kid has 26 bits. This one has 55 or 56 plus 1 or whatever, whatever, well, 56 plus 1, that's what it says on here. Yeah, plus you get this little magnetic uh, table thing and a few tools. So what's the, uh, the big difference here? Uh, they both do the same thing. Each has different features. This one here has different torque adjustments where this one here does not. However, this one has an LED work light on it. They both run about the same speed. Um, I used th this one here, the CS0233, when I took this phone apart to try it out and everything. And I didn't video that because I hadn't really thought about turning the camera on when I was doing it. So, and I can't put it back to show you me putting it back together because I don't have the battery yet. It's supposed to be here today. But I just wanted to get this done. And why did I take the whole phone apart to change the battery? Well, it used to be you could just pop off the back cover, take the battery out, pop a new one in. The way this one here is made, this is a Samsung, is that battery plugs in right here where that screwdriver is pointed to. And to get to that, you have to take off this back cover because even though you can lift up this flap, you cannot get to where that plugs in. Brilliant design, brilliant. So it's, and I've done one of these before, it's a Galaxy. So yeah, I, I knew that was what the problem was gonna be and I knew it was gonna be a hassle. And it's not my cell phone either, so mine's on my hip. So getting back to these, the smaller set 
costs just a little bit less than the larger set, but the larger set has more parts and pieces in it, depending on what you're working on. Uh, some things have uh, really strange looking bits, and I don't even know the name of some of those shapes. You got, you know, you got torques, and well, I guess they do kind of tell you here. You got your U bits, which look like little forks. You got square drive, you got torques, which looks like a star. Of course, then you got straight bit, and you have uh, torques with more prongs, I guess you would call it. So it's a P2, P5, and P6 for the smaller star bits, I guess that's what you call it. And then you have the torques. And then you have the Y bits. So there's a lot more assortment of bits in the larger set. In the smaller set, you've got, uh, of course, you got Phillips in both of them. you got slot in both of them. This one has star, Y, hex, and torques. But I did not see that this one had hex on it. Yes, it does have hex but it has more sizes. So, depends what you're doing, what you're working on. Again, there'll be links in the description on both of these. Um, I was actually pretty happy when I was offered to uh, test and demonstrate these because this guy was getting to be a little bit frustrating. If I'm taking off a part of a laptop, by the time I get all the screws out of the back and off the main part so I can get to the keyboard, I've threw a set of batteries. So I've got two more batteries to put in it. And yes, while you can do it this way manually, there are so many screws on the back of a laptop and on the circuit boards, or for example, even here on the cell phone, just taking the back off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen screws of these itty bitty ones here. So yeah, electric screwdrivers are nice and it, in the line of tiny tools, this will do it. So yeah, this is kind of a video a little bit out of the ordinary, but I kind of wanted to bring these up because I think they're a good investment. And again, they were provided to me. I didn't have to buy them, but I didn't know about it, these kits before either because I think I probably would have bought the bigger kit myself. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.